This is the second in a two-part series on automated systems. This video describes the advantages and disadvantages of an automated system for a given scenario. It assumes you've already watched and are comfortable with the content of the previous video. So there are many different scenarios where automated systems can be used. There are a number listed in your syllabus which you could be asked about in the exam. And these cover industry, transport, weather, gaming, lighting and science. So we're going to look at a decent example from each one. For industry, let's consider a nuclear power station. These use highly automated systems controlled by what is known as a distributed control system, or DCS. They're constantly collecting vast amounts of input data from sensors, such as temperature, pressure, flow, radiation and gas. And then based on predefined sets of rules, they'll be controlling various actuators and motors that operate various parts of the power station, such as water cooling pumps and valves, gas pumps, and initiating automatic emergency shutdowns. All this information will also be fed to supervisors in a control room who can take manual intervention at any point. With transport, let's look at intelligent braking systems, something we covered in one of our previous videos on sensors. So here, a sensor takes constant readings of the car's distance to the objects ahead of it. These analog real-world values are converted by the microprocessor into a digital signal. The microprocessor then takes this input and calculates the speed the car is travelling and the safe braking distance. If it detects the car is travelling too fast and a collision is likely, it issues command to brake. Digital brake signals are then converted. These can then be sent to a motor and actuator which will apply the brake via a digital to analog converter. And obviously the actual physical brake then slows the car down. The third area we have to consider is agriculture, and here we're looking at a commercial greenhouse. Again, we have a number of sensors collecting a range of information from the environment, such as the temperature, humidity, light, moisture, and pH level of the soil. This is all fed into a computer system, where a microprocessor looks at the readings, compares them against values, and uses a set of rules to decide what to do. The output from this system could be one of two types. There could be simple monitoring output shown in the bottom right. This is where information is sent to a display, informing, for example, levels of pH to say the soil might be too acidic or alkaline. It could detect, for example, that a water valve is open, yet the soil moisture is low, therefore suggesting the possibility of a leak and advising a supervisor to attend. Or it could take automatic outputs, known as control outputs, shown in the top right. This would involve things such as using actuators to control various motors, opening and closing greenhouse windows if it's too hot, opening and closing blinds, or opening and closing water valves and sprinkler systems. The next scenario we look at is weather. And specifically here, we're looking at the example of an airport weather station. These are located around all major airports, and again, they use a variety of sensors to collect information about the surrounding environment. This information is fed into a microprocessor and processes the data, which then transmits to various locations. It can transmit to the airport control tower via Wi-Fi for further processing and monitoring. And quite commonly, automatic updates are sent out to all nearby aircraft in the vicinity on the current weather conditions. Gaming is another area which has really benefited from automated systems. Here we see a modern responsive gaming controller. Again, it's using a range of sensors such as acoustic and accelerometer and pressure. And the microprocessor in the controller processes these readings, as well as sending them via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to the games console for further processing. This results in a more immersive gaming experience. Actuators can provide haptic feedback, 
and adaptive triggers can provide resistance and realism in games. Built-in speakers can provide audio feedback and in-controller lighting can provide further visual feedback. Lighting in general is another area which has benefited massively from automation. A great easy example is lights that operate along the side of roads or motorways, which automatically turn on when it gets dark and turns off in the morning. Here we're looking at the example of a home security and atmospheric lighting system. Again, as you can see, is quite common. A number of sensors collect information. The microprocessor to control the atmospheric lighting when it gets dark as well as security lighting when it detects movement, takes in this data and operates as appropriate. Automation is massively used in the field of science and there are literally thousands of examples. The one we're showing you here is of a chemical process in a controlled laboratory. The microprocessor is controlling the precise amount of liquid to dispense until a given reaction occurs, using a series of sensors to measure the liquid and the reaction state. So clearly there are lots of advantages to automated systems. We've summarized some generic ones here, although some are obviously more relevant to certain scenarios and it's important you are able to identify those. So in general, operations can be carried out faster than a human operator. It's safer as automated system is more likely to make timely interventions. It also allows humans to keep away from dangerous chemicals and other hazardous environments. Processes are more likely to run under optimal conditions and for longer. And there are long-term cost savings over a large human workforce. It makes efficient use of materials and resources, which results in higher productivity. And especially in the fields of science and medicine, we can get more consistent results and repeatable results. As with all things, there are some disadvantages. A lot of automated systems are initially very expensive to set up. They require significant testing and calibration to make sure they work as intended and work accurately. And of course, any computerized system is always subject to cyber attacks. All automated systems require highly specialized and ongoing maintenance. And they are only able to respond within given parameters or situation and so therefore are not generally as flexible as trained humans who are able to use intuition and the benefit of experience. Automation, obviously, as we can tell, can result in considerable job redundancies. And we look at this again when we discuss our videos on robotics. That's everything you need to know. Pause now and take some notes.